Let's go down to Rome's. Mercifully, we are inching close to the NFL draft, but I, I feel like we need to put out as many combinations as possible. It's like trying to win the Powerball. Just like the more combinations, the more chance we have to get it right. Also, what do you mean? So this is like mock draft 95.2. D- don't care. Uh, not everyone's cup of tea, but I, I enjoy it, and uh, I think some other people do too. And wouldn't it be great if we just nail one? Every single pick as well as trades, we just got it. God, I, I feel like I feel like we should get a couple of Billy for that. Who knows, man? But uh, th- this addition, uh, so we are trading up. That's right. So, J.J. McCarthy, come on down. You are a Minnesota fighting Viking. Uh, so, the, the board breaks down. Williams, Daniels, May, and then uh, the Cardinals decide to go with Joe Alt, uh, the, the the pride of Totino Grace, a min- Minnesota kid, uh, as their left tackle of the future. And, I mean, it's a deep tackle class, yes, and also it's a deep wide receiver class. But uh, just getting the dude that's going to watch uh, Kyler's ass, I mean... They they do have another first round pick. Maybe they maybe they can get Lad McConkey or something. But I mean, it's kind of tough passing on Harrison Jr. Passing on neighbors, but is what it is. Uh, but also could be a spot too where they don't trade out and they just take their guy, which would give the Vikings an opportunity in, in this spot because uh, at five uh, is the Los Angeles Superchargers. Now Chargers probably very little chance that the Chargers trade in division with the Broncos or the Raiders but the the one team to watch is the Giants and if McCarthy is there at six I think there's a very strong chance that they will get him so the Vikings uh, decide to give the Chargers in this spot uh, you know the trade offer of uh, 11 23 a fifth round pick as well as uh, 2025 third now I understand it's probably wishful thinking that the Vikings wouldn't have to give up that first, but also the jump from 11 to 5 is a lot less than 11 to 4 or 11 to 3. It's almost like a couple picks less. And also, even though uh, you know McCarthy may have an axe to grind against the Vikings, I feel like he understands that the best landing spot for his son, J.J. McCarthy, is with the Vikings, so they make it happen for eh, just, just a smidge less. So the Vikings do land their future franchise quarterback, and Quasey and Kevin O'Connell have been doing extensive work on McCarthy. And I, I understand the limitations with McCarthy because you haven't seen it. You're, you're betting on faith. Uh, he does have a live arm. Uh, he does throw with accuracy. He does do really good things on third down. Also, what's important is that he has the most under center experience, uh, no, like, not like snaps, but actual physical snaps under under center as opposed to shotgun, uh, which a lot of these guys are uh, well versed in. But running play action, uh, just the just the footwork, just the the rhythm of throwing uh, on the boot action off of play action. I, I think that he is going to come in and do some very good things. So McCarthy, and again, if Quasey and Kevin O'Connell are willing to bet their their uh, their livelihoods on McCarthy, who are we to argue? Sylvie, what up? Sylvie wants Michael Penix Jr., but it is what it is. So the Vikings trade up and get their quarterback. Now, a long time uh, until day three. The Vikings don't have a day two selection. So uh, Cedric Van Pram uh, ends up uh, in day three. Now, a lot of the mock drafts, uh, he does uh, go in day two, uh, rightfully so, and I think that's where he will go. But for whatever reason, he fell to the Vikings in this spot, and I I couldn't pass him up. So uh, Van Pram is 6'4", he's 298. Yes, we're doing this again. An undersized center. But Van Praan plays with great leverage. I think that it, this is more of a Zach Frazier type situation. Uh, he's tough. He's gritty. He's a finisher. And like we said, I mean, two national championships. And it's not like Georgia was playing Little Sisters, uh, Little Sisters of Chattanooga or uh, e- East uh, Paducah Tech every, every single week. So uh, Georgia, pun intended, had some dogs on them schedules. Uh, so and they're doing some great things. And yeah, I, I understand that we're we're hoping in terms of the Pantheon under centers of undersized centers. We hope that uh, SVP is more Travis Jason Kelsey nailed it uh, than Garrett Bradbury. Uh, but also, I feel like Van, Van Pran is a little bit like James Daniels uh, coming out of Iowa and uh, ended up with the uh, Bears and Steelers. I I was always a big fan of James Daniels. I think that he does have an inherent toughness. I think that he does play with a decent anchor by hook or by crook because, I mean, he is 6'4". He's not the lengthiest center in the world, and he is you know underweight, undersized, but he's he's always found ways to get things done, and it's never picture perfect, uh, but he does have this gritty intensity, and, yeah, sometimes he will get dinged up uh, and burned on some plays, but uh, he's he's gone against 
uh, ferocious nose tackles uh, before, and he'll be able to do it again in the National Football League. So I think also him get in the fourth round is huge, monstrous value for the Vikings. Next up, so sticking with the offensive line, first you buy the Haas, then you buy the insurance. So Satatoa uh, Lumea coming out of Utah, 6'4", 319, a four-year starter for the Utes, a mix of right guard and right tackle, and power. That's, that's what you're bringing. Now, I, I don't think that uh, Lamea would be a candidate to be a swing backup, but a, a guy who could fill in on that right side, whether guard or tackle, uh, I think that it certainly could be in, in the offing as well as a little bit of insurance uh, for Brian O'Neill as he gets a little bit older and his uh, you know cap hits become a little bit more uh, poignant. Mm. Uh, into the fifth round. So 157 overall, switching to the other trench. Tyler Davis is a name that really intrigues me. So, He's again, this is like a very money ball situation because Tyler Davis is not going to be selling jeans, right? He's not what you would picture as a true blue nose tackle. He's a little bit sawed off. He's a little bit stout. He's well, that is what you think of a, of a nose tackle. But uh, also he like he, he has shortish arms. So he almost looks more like a like an undersized center mm, uh, versus a nose tackle. But he gets after it. He gets after it, man. Like undersized, and he, he uh, but feisty, and he was one of the driving forces uh, in uh, along that Clemson defensive line. So it's like it's like last year when we were watching uh, Brian Bruzzy uh, highlights for for Clemson, and it's just like, oh yeah, Tyler Davis keeps doing work, he keeps really getting after it, man. Uh, and he plays a great leverage, has a, a ferocious punch, and really uh, really does uh, get it done. A ninety point eight PFF run defense grade uh, for the Tigers in twenty twenty three. Also. Don't sleep on his pass rushing because he he had six sacks as a true freshman coming in when he was more of a situational pass rusher. But he developed more into a you know a stout uh, nose tackle, uh, and he has a career 118 pressures and 16 sacks. So he can get after it. There is upside there, but l- like I said, I, I think he's going to fall because in terms of nose tackles, well, Tavondre Sweat's probably going to fall too. Uh, but Davis again, he doesn't look the part, and a, a lot of the NFL is. You know, height, weight, speed, snobs. Uh, but Davis in the fifth round, I think, is huge value. Uh, going the other direction. So a, a plus athlete, Jordan Jefferson coming out of LSU, 6'2", 313. So originally at West Virginia, Mountain Mama, before transferring to Baton Rouge uh, last year. So a no crossover with Jaquil and Roy. Uh, but Jefferson, Jefferson's interesting because it feels like he, he does have the talent, and he has an amazingly quick first step, and he can be disruptive as a, 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 a three-tech, uh, but he hasn't really tapped into that yet. But seven pressures, two and a half sacks, uh, his one year in Death Valley, and like we said, quick, disruptive first step, and he definitely would be a project where I, I feel like, well, he can be a project on a, ooh, a competitive project where uh, you rotate him in, get him t- 10, 12 snaps a game with very specific defined roles like, hey, this is your job. This is your gap. This is go whatever. Right, where I, I think Davis could potentially win the starting job uh, right away, especially if they, if they want to uh, use uh, Harrison Phillips as more as a four tech, five tech. But uh, Jordan Jefferson and yes. LSU, another Jefferson, another JJ. And also it's ironic because Justin Jefferson's Older brother is named Jordan, who was a quarterback at LSU back in the day. So, nah. uh, two seventh round picks. Uh, first one is uh, Le- Leatric Griffin coming out of Mississippi State. Now, he's fun. He is super fun, dude. 5'10", a buck 81, uh, 4'4", 540, but he is a fun joystick athlete. And I-, I feel like if Kevin O'Connell can't find a role for him offensively, that's on Kevin O'Connell, man, where he does bring a very unique skill set to the team. Where Also, I feel like, they could use him as a running back, like a situational gadgety type running back, but 50 catches, uh, 6 uh, 58 and four touchdowns as a senior, and also is huge, monstrous as, as a kick returner. Now, yes, the Vikings do have King Kenne, and uh, but Griffin is dynamic as a kick returner. And also, I think that he would be great under the new kick return rules. Uh, 30.4 yards per kick return during his career in Starksville, as well as two touchdowns. Uh, now, doesn't have a lot of punt return uh, experience, but could get into that mix as well. And I feel like in the seventh round, you're throwing darts. Like you want That's when you want to take gambles on the height, weight, speed guys. He's the opposite. Like He's very short. He is very light, uh, but he does have speed. So draft the physical freaks or... Players that are a lot of fun, and th- this is the latter. Although he's a little freakish too. Hmm. Uh, lastly, uh, pick two thirty-two. Uh, decide to finally 
finally go secondary. But Dante uh, Kent coming out of Central Michigan, a five eleven, a buck ninety two. Now a little bit overlooked uh, in the in, in the draft season uh, process, but he is a press man specialist, a career 37 passes broken up, as well as two interceptions. Now, what's interesting is that he has so many passes broken up is that quarterbacks still go after him, right? So that, that's a factor in there. But uh, I think that he can develop on the outside. I think that he can, uh, certainly can add some depth to that cornerback room as well as play some splash, uh, plus special teams uh, out of the gate. So uh, looking to see how all, all this stacks up with the depth chart so uh jj mccarthy waltzing on in quarterback of the future hell he might not even be quarterback too right away but mccarthy would be a, a huge benefit uh beneficiary of sitting a year and you know breaking down some of those mechanics uh, getting used to being a pro's pro uh and, and really just just yeah just sitting in uh then uh Leatra griffin getting in there the wide receiver group as well as uh i think that he could be in the kick return mix although king kenny i mean king kenny's value to the moon baby that's right two along the offensive line cedric von Pran, I, I think that he's your starting center in 2025 also i wouldn't really rule him out from competing for a guard spot even though yes he is a little bit undersized and maybe that center is going to be center is going to be center uh but also uh lamea i think that he could get into the, one of the guard competitions as well so you could have at least four legit competitors for the two guard spots with Brandel and Ed Ingram as the incumbents and the favorites and also Von Pran and Lumea getting in the mix there. But at, at bottom line, they, they will factor into the offensive line uh, down the line defensively. So I, I think there's a good chance that Tyler Davis wins the nose tackle job. Uh, I, I just think that high energy getting after it, he, he'll find a way and Phillips, uh, getting uh, a little bit of a breather as well as, uh, moving him out to defensive end could be the best for everyone. Also Jordan Jefferson playing on the end or a three tech and then, uh, Dante Kent, uh, getting into the mix, uh, as a boundary corner, uh, could be great value as a seventh round pick, but overall, like, yes, uh, the Vikings, uh, did give up. Um, a future third as well as package up 11 23 to go up to five to get jj mccarthy and i i understand does he have the ceiling the sky high ceiling of a may or a a, a, a caleb williams maybe maybe not uh, but will he operate the offense efficiently yes will he do exactly what kevin o'connell wants to do within the framework of the offense yes will he be able to get the ball to jefferson and addison and hawkinson yes 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 and also all he does is what because uh, i feel like Everyone and their mom always made a big deal. It's like, well, Kurt Cousins puts up big numbers, but he never won. J.J. McCarthy didn't put up big numbers, but all he did was win. And whenever they needed a throw from him on third down or in the fourth quarter, he, he showed up. So uh, that's what's important. But uh, that's it. Uh, let's take a look at uh, another seven-round Vikings mock draft as well as a look at the depth chart. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. You guys know what to do. Skull production value.